Aloha and welcome to Wisdom Dialogues with Hope Johnson coming to you from the beautiful big island of Hawaii, Hawaiian beaches to be exact. And today I have Lori as a panelist, Lori Tibitat. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> We have some fun things to get to today. I'm going to see, Lori, did you have anything that you wanted to share first before we start? Um, yeah, I, um, I've been seeing with the help of Gabriella, Gabby, Melina, she has, she really helped me this week because I was in something so much that I couldn't see through it. Um, I have the opportunity to try LSD. Oh, tomorrow. So we were talking about it over the weekend, and Peter got very angry. And it was it was basically ego to ego because I was like, "It's my body; I should be able to do what I want." Oh, and fun. All of that, and I. No, she got me to see that he is me. He is just showing up with the fear that's already in there, and I was blaming him. Wow, that was so good. That was a big one because I really was in it for a huh? good day before I talked with Gabby about it. I don't even know how it came up with her, but wow, it was so good to be able to sit in it. Uh huh. Feel like there was nowhere to go. I was damned if I do, damned if I don't because of the guilt. And, and then I went, and when she was saying, Look, he's you. He's, he's showing you the guilt underneath all of what you, yeah. Oh, so good. Yeah. yeah. And the fun thing is, the fun thing is too, is that you can't carry guilt. It's not like you have it in a bag and you're carrying it around with you. It's just a guilty habit. You know, it's a habit of attacking self attack. So, you know, when you're attacking yourself, if it, you get upset, that's how, you know, right. you know, the feeling is very instructional. You know, that's how you know. It, it's, not, it's not justified. See, it's not, the feeling isn't justified because it has no basis in reality, but it's showing you what kind of habit, you could say, who your teacher is in that moment. Because you have two teachers. You have the, the teacher that's, that resonates with love, you know, and the teacher that resonates with fear. You can be listening to either one of those at, at a time. And when you don't feel good, when you feel upset, that just means that you're listening to that particular teacher. It does not mean that you have guilt in yourself that you need to get out or anything like that. So, you're, so basically your habit starts to change. You know, the way, that, the way that you listen, who you're listening to in the moment, your habit will start to change as you see it more and more. You won't be so drawn to the one that's going to make you feel like upset, any kind of upset. And that's how you know. And it's just right now in the moment. And that's how you know. And that's why Jesus would always say, repent. You know, because you can repent right now. And that's basically you just make another choice. Right. For love instead of fear. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So... Communication is an inside job. That's what we're getting to right now. Okay. Yeah. Um, you, were, you were the one that said, can we talk about this? Right. Okay. So here's what it is. Communication is an inside job. Communication is beyond words. It's the way of demonstrating to your own mind that you are divine and invulnerable to worldly effects. So if you're not communicating, you're projecting. Okay. The projecting is demonstrating that you are vulnerable to worldly effects. You see that? So it's like when someone's coming up to you and talking about something and then you start to get defensive, that's projecting. It's like it's demonstrating to your own mind and to them that you're vulnerable to something in the world. So that's the difference. It's communicating or projecting. Whenever you find yourself wanting communication, it's because you're already projecting yourself as limited and vulnerable while imagining that someone outside of you is responsible for your feeling separate. People can feel you 
When you think you are wanting communication, what you are really looking for is an argument because you are already in an argument with yourself. See what makes you want the what makes you want the communication basically, you know, it's kind of, it's it's like wishing that they weren't judging you at the time that they would just accept you the way you are, you know. And that's like wanting communication and when you feel when you feel secure within yourself, you don't want anything. You don't want any communication or anything else from other people. And you're happy to hear what what seems like a judgment. You know, you can be really happy to hear what seems like a judgment. Like, "Oh, thank you." Okay, thank you for letting me know. Okay. So your kids and other people, this was on the on my um, unschooling for parents one. This is on my unschooling for parents feed. Um, because I noticed, you know, people with kids are they'll be they'll be um, going, I just want you to communicate with me. I just want you to talk to me. And the kids like I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> Your kids and other people pick up on that uncomfortable feeling that you have, that feeling of wanting communication. And unless they're looking for an argument like you, it's going to look like they're avoiding you. And it, that's even, you know, if you're putting up a wall like that, even if they are ready to communicate, you might not see that. You might not even see that because you're looking for something else. You're looking, if you're looking for an argument, you're in an argument with yourself and you're looking for an argument really, but you don't know it. You think you're looking for communication, but really you want to project. And people know it and they move away from you, especially kids. So when you feel avoided, you can make a conscious choice to get that feeling effect. And we'll get into that too. What's the, what is the feeling effect? Instead of pursuing communication with a person. When you're willing to get that feeling effect, it demonstrates to your mind that you are willing to learn how to truly communicate, even in the midst of perceiving that communication is lacking. So like in that example with, uh, with, with your husband, you know, if you're willing to get that, like you feel like you want to argue with him, but you're willing to get that feeling right there, that's what cuts it off. That's what cuts off the projection, not the feeling. It cuts off the projection. The thought projection is what keeps on feeding that false self-belief. False self-beliefs need that, needs that protection, needs that projection in order to keep on being supported. Otherwise, it'll dissolve. There's no need for that false self-belief. It's just that it's been projected. Okay? So it's, it needs to keep on being projected, though. So that's why when you get the feeling effect, you cut it off really fast. As you rediscover your, your ability to communicate, communicate truly, you will rejoice with every appearance of you wanting communication and not getting it. So a big part of that, too, is when you're feeling upset, even when you're in it, even when you're projecting, to remind yourself, this is a benefit because everything that seems like a breakdown is really a breakthrough. See, this has got to be good. If I'm defending myself, this has got to be good. See, because it's all leading up to, it's all leading up to that time when there's the, there's that interaction and you're just okay with it. So in the heat of the moment, I said, this is my body and I should be able to do with ever I want with it you know I knew right then that was all ego and I called myself out in front of the people that I'm doing it with and everything I said I recognize that that is all ego right there. yeah 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 but and but at the same time at the same time it's a breakthrough and that's why you know if you accept it like that if you'll accept that it's benefit and not like you screwed up See, the more you feel like, and it, you know, the more you feel like you you screwed up and project that feeling onto yourself, the more you're feeding that self belief. Right. So, in order to experience that breakthrough, you know, because it's already occurred, it really has already occurred, you know. But in order to experience that breakthrough for yourself, takes getting the feeling effect instead of projecting that that belief about yourself as if you screwed up. See. When, when something like that occurs, what people tend to do is make a bigger and bigger deal of it. 
all right? It's already occurred. You've all, you're already completely healed. You're like, you're, you're not even here in the stream. You're not here like that. <laughs> okay, as you enjoy your ability to communicate more and more, your mind will become calm and clear as a result. In the outer world, your kids and others will seem to respond with willingness to communicate with you without your insistence that they do. Right. People are just people are just drawn to it. People are just drawn to it. When you're kind to yourself, people are just drawn to that. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, you uh, mentioned, yeah, I took some LSD, and someone goes, oh. Okay, thanks for letting me know. Okay. You know, they're just, the people are drawn to that. Okay, you froze. Oh. You would, okay, I took some LSD and then you froze. Am I still frozen? No, you're okay now. You came back, but <laughs> I don't know what you said. <laughs> okay. Uh, when, when you say I took some LSD and someone gets excited about it, like, hey, that's not cool. You shouldn't be doing that. Then you would, you would just be able to be, okay, thank you for letting me know. Right. right. Okay. Oh, here's like, something about, oh, go ahead. Gabby was like, I'm so excited for you. <laughs> oh, good for her. She knows. Yay. Phoebe, Phoebe's like, you're going to love it. <laughs> uh, aloha, Bob. Aloha, Anne. Thank you for joining. Yay. I've never oh, I got Facebook going too. Am I live on Facebook? I probably am. I just don't know how to get to I it. Just don't know. Yeah, it's it's funny. It's funny. And then if, and then if I go to oh, I know how to go over there and pause the video so I'm not talking over myself. Just so I could see if anyone makes comments here. Oh yeah, there we are. Okay, cool. It's pause so the the volume's off. All right on. Okay. Okay, so another thing about um about LSD or any any substance for that matter. You know, someone was asking me, like, what can we practice? <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Mary told me I'm live. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what can we practice? You know, someone asked me, what, what can we practice on this, um, on this drug? They were doing ayahuasca. What kind of spiritual practice? Do you have any recommendations for spiritual practice that we could do? And I said, yeah, I have a res recommendation for a good spiritual spiritual practice when you're when you're taking any kind of substance is to remind yourself that that substance has no effect on your body and no effect on your mind. Oh, great. Then I'm not <laughs> you're, you're making it all up. Oh my God. Seriously. <laughs> all up. Yeah. And you know, and, and it's, just, it's like the same thing. Uh, someone's talking to you. They say, Lori, someone named Roz, uh, you know, the, the same thing with any kind of substance. Uh, same thing with any kind of substance is, you know, it, it'll, it'll always lead back to this guilty feeling, whether it's projected, whether you see it projected from someone else, or here's, here's another one, as if it sets you back somehow health-wise. It has no power to do that. You, like, you give it all the power, alcohol, anything, you know, it's like, it, it's like go ahead. Edibles. Edibles, yeah. But, but, but hope. When yes. I make an edible, it is, I, I guess it's just, I completely believe it because boy, it is a different experience. Yeah. It, well, well, that's, that's okay that, it, that you're getting a different experience. That's all awesome and everything. It's just look at the thought projections that say it's because of the edible. That different ex experience is available to you anytime with or without an edible. You just make it into being about the edible as if you remind yourself, if, you know, if you're just willing to remind yourself because these thought projections are automatic, you're willing to remind yourself that it's not the edible. I made this. You'll start to see more and more how you can get that same feeling effect without an edible. <laughs> I know that when I went to a party on Saturday, I met some people that I've never met before and Oh, we had, actually, it was Scott's 60th birthday party. And he, the, the guy actually took me aside at the end, and he thanked me for being there. He says, you're so happy. You made this party, he said. I'm like, what the? 
And the last time that happened to me was a stranger in the mall um, over the winter, and I had taken an edible. <laughs> so back then, I the mind said, oh, he's only noticing that because I'm on the edible. But this time there was nothing, and it was the same comment. So yeah, 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 I see. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, so it's like we trick ourselves into becoming dependent on worldly things. Yeah. You need nothing. You need nothing. It, all the feelings are within you. Right. There's just nothing out there. Okay, so on the communication is an inside job. Do you sense any questions arising around that at this point? Um. Okay, I'm going to give you a scenario that happened today and see if that, if the communication thing comes into it, the communication inside myself. Um, my ex, my granddaughter's mom called me or, or messaged me and said that my son, my granddaughter's dad was, oh, she was crying and blaming him and blaming and I automatically went into because she says she's sick and tired of him and she can't deal. I said, if you are really sick and tired of him, you will go inside and see that you're blaming him for da 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 yeah. So that he, same thing. And I was clear and no bones about it. No bone, no. I was like, you two are going to blame each other and you are it, you both say you're sick to death of it. You, you, oh, venom, venom. It was, and I was saying, I don't know, I was very clear, no rise in anything here. But then I started thinking, okay, okay, I communicated with them good, but did I project that to happen today? Of course. What for? <laughs> it's all for the same thing. It's like, okay, so you always ask, what is it for? What is it for, always? And wait for the answer. Because, you know, it's always, always, always for the same thing. Like, I can tell you what it's for, but yeah. then for you to know, it take, takes you waiting for the answer, and then you know what everything is for. Everything is for undoing the guilty thought. It's the only problem. It's the only problem. And then the only solution is love. So, you know, you are projecting and you, and, and you know, you are projecting everything that you perceive here is projection, but you're projecting it for communication. You're projecting it for communication and communication is only communicating with yourself. You don't even have to be in a, in communication specifically with another person because your body is your, your body. The appearance of your body is for communication. So it's for demonstrating that only love is real and none of this is real. So, so, and, and, you know, you could say that you're doing it together because we, you know, we, as in the, as in a, a collection of projected mind. Okay, we're one mind in the dream, we're a bunch of projected minds. See, uh, in the dream, it's projected minds. So from their point of view, from that projected mind, each one is projecting the whole scenario. And we're, and we're dancing together, like energy's dancing. There's still only one of us. We're dancing together. We're all projecting each other. We're not seeing each other clearly. So in the communication, it's like you're, you're, you're um, looking past this illusion of how you see people and you're going straight to communication, communication from the heart. You're only communicating with yourself even when you speak and, it's, and from their point of view, they're also able to receive that from you, even if you don't perceive them receiving it from you right away. You know, you can, you can trust that every time you communicate truly, it's healing. Okay. Okay. I did not receive that from either one of them during, but it was a deep connection, a calm from a place that was just complete love and understanding of what's going on sure. in, in each other's minds and blaming and, um, and, 
at, to my son, I said to him, you know, there's nothing you can do that's going to, nothing you can do that's going to make me stop loving you. <laughs> there's nothing you can do. Yeah. I can see right through all of this. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. And, so, you know, that always goes, that always goes to, that always goes straight to the heart. Mm. You know, when you're, when you're communicating from your heart, that goes straight to the heart. Even if people are not taking it, you know, and in, in that in that moment, I mean, you know, if someone is not wanting to hear it, and you, you don't have to say it, you know, because it's your feeling, it's your feeling, and you can feel them. Let's say it like that. You can totally. feel them totally. So when they're putting you up against the wall ever, and that's not that, and that's not communicating from the heart when you can feel yourself going up a wall. When you feel yourself going up a wall, you can pull back in and just be with your energy. You know, this weekend I had an instance where one of my family members was taking something really, really real, you know, and crying and stuff. And, and I said, you know, it's just a feeling. It's not really anything. It's not really that anything's happening. Cause it was like, why is this happening? Why is this happening? It's not really that anything's happening. And, and she goes, she goes, yes, it is. And I said, okay. And then she's opened up. Yeah. Okay. So this is exactly, okay. So as the venom was happening, there was a recognition that nothing's going to get through this. So there was a, I just didn't answer. I just, uh -huh. there was like a good half an hour that went by. And then there was, that was the arising later on of saying, I, nothing you can say or do is ever going to change how much I love you or with something like that. Yeah. Yeah. There was a complete dropping because I saw no matter what was said that ego, his ego was just, it was feeding off it. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. That, you can see when that happens too. Yeah. Yeah. And just, and just relax and it's okay with me. It basically it's okay with me. Yeah. And what I, what I was getting was that, you know, a projection, like it's really bad that they're, they're having a parent and a parent breakdown. Yeah. This is bad. This is bad. This is bad. And I go, okay, but you know, nothing's happening. I don't mind it. I don't mind having this perception with you. Nothing's happening. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, and, and there turned out to be a, a really, you know, complete transformation. Nice. Complete transformation. Well, that's not what happened here, but <laughs> well, well, one of the one of the thing one of the things about that one of the things about that is you know I and I heard it a couple times is that nothing is going to nothing is going to happen nothing is going to um, get through this ego thing this ego energy like this so you know it, that's also one of those sneaky things that kind of interjects there um, you know like I like I shared with you earlier the healing has already happened. It's already happened. You know, the healing has already happened. Doesn't mean that I need to keep on talking to try to make it have an effect right now, you know, in the, uh, in my dream, but I'm sure that the healing has already happened, you know, cause that's also a projection that they're going to keep on going like right. that. Right. Yeah. You're basically, you know, you could, you could basically say that you're, you're projecting yourself into it to see the healing effect, to see the healing effect. So it's like seeing it is kind of like seeing beyond what seems to be arising right now, seeing beyond and knowing that it already has take place. Also knowing that what you're perceiving them going through that seems like an ego eruption like that, that it's actually a breakthrough for them. Oh. And it's actually a benefit and a breakthrough for them. Not that they're not going to stop, see? See what I mean? So that opens the door some more. That opens the door some more. Since it is all in your perception, like you have total dominion over it. It is all like that. You just have total dominion over it. So you always, you always are the one with all of the power in something like that. So claim it. That's all. You start to claim it. You like start it's done? It's that, all that, that you have all the power that you have all of the power and with all of the power, you know, you see it in your mind's eye as, it, as whatever is arising, you know, you're not, you're, you're not trying to deny it because it is your feeling projected and whatever you're perceiving, that's your feeling projected and that that is a benefit and that is healing 
and that is, you know, it's already healed. So it's totally okay. It's so okay because it's already healed. See, when you, when you get the idea that they're just, nothing's going to get through to them and they're just going to keep on going like that, that's also a feeling projected. See, it's also a feeling being projected. So when you project that feeling, what it does is it teaches your own mind. It feeds your self-belief. It goes around and feeds your self-belief. And, you know, I'm going to put right here. Uh, I don't have anything that I could put up. Um, oh, Yulia, how cute. Okay, just a second. I'll get you on there. But I want to just um, just articulate here. I'll do it with my hands. Let me blow myself up so I can make sure I have everything in video. Okay, so I want you to visualize a circle. Like here's the bottom, here's the top, right? And a circle circle so at the bottom is self-belief bottom is self-belief it's hidden it's always hidden okay and then over here in the side we have feeling effect the feeling effect is projected by self-belief okay from the feeling effect if the feeling effect if it doesn't stop there at the feeling effect it turns into thought projection it projects thoughts so a thought projects projection might be this is the uh, these guys are never gonna these guys are never gonna see it at least not today or today they're not gonna see it whatever that gets from momentum from the top goes around and feeds the self-belief it supports the self-belief okay so I have an image of that in your mind and that that could be very helpful if it resonates with you to have an image of this circle and I believe this is what they call the wheel of samsara I'm not for sure what tradition that is. Maybe it's Buddhism. I think it is Buddhism. But um, like it's a wheel. And that's what I saw. It was like an image of a wheel. So, so, so the power that we have is here at the feeling effect. This is where we have all of the power. So because that's the first manifestation of the self-belief. It's the first manifestation. We have all the power right there. So we go back to the feeling effect, like when the thoughts say, oh, gosh, these guys, they're not going to stop doing this today. They're not going to listen to anything. They're not going to, they're not getting it. Feel that. And then the thought projection doesn't have power. See, when, when, it's, when, when it's given power, when a thought projection is given, the, is given the power to keep going around like that, it supports your self-belief, basically saying, I'm not going to get it. See? Mm. It keeps on supporting your self-belief. And here's the thing. Everything is a projection. Everything, everything you think, every thought, everything that you perceive is a projection. Everything in the percep per perception is a projection. And when it comes to your thought projections, there's two choices of thought projections, you know, love and fear. You could say that the self-belief, there's the self-belief, there's two of them. There's self-belief based on love. It's also a fall, you know, it's, you could say it's a false thing. It's not, it's, it's also not something that's real. It's not like, like real, but in the dream, you don't have the real, you have, you, you have an expression or a represent, let's say, let's say a representative of what's real. So you have a representative of what's real that, you know, that you're divine and you have a representative of your guilty. Okay. Kind of side by side. The representative that says you're guilty is totally supported by what you believe about yourself. Okay. The representative that says you're divine, you could say God planted that there as an answer to you thinking you're guilty. Because if you only thought you were guilty and didn't have that other representative, you'd be lost forever. You'd just be lost forever. So as you stop, stop feeding that representative of fear with these thought projections, the other representative of love, it gains in power and it actually dissolves the, it dissolves the fearful one. It dissolves the fearful one until even it has no meaning because you don't need that. You don't even need that representative of love anymore when you're back in reality, you know, when your mind's restored to peace. So it's just there to resolve it. When you're not feeding the self-belief that's made of love or that's made of fear, the one that's made of love takes over. And then your, and then your thought projections have a different tone. You can sense the tone. That's why you know whether to act out of whatever it is that you're feeling, you know, whatever it is that you're feeling, you know, you know whether to, well, you don't have a choice whether you act out of it, but you have a choice whether you project it. So if you're feeling upset, 
any kind of upset feeling. And it is an upset feeling to say these guys aren't going to get it. That is an upset feeling. So when you, when, you, when you sense that upset feeling, you stop that projecting by getting the feeling. And then it has no effect. Oh. See, then the projection has no effect. Because you not, then you're not feeding. You're not, not, not pushing it around, around and around and around. And once you get that feeling effect, then, you know, automatically, the one that represents love, it takes the, it, it takes the place. The feeling shifts. That's why we feel a shift. That's why I would actually feel a shift in the body's energy field. So if you're thinking, if the thought is that they're not going to get it and you recognize where it's coming from, all of a sudden your energy will shift and it's like, oh yeah, it's already happened. Mm. It's already healed. This is just a trick. It's a trick of the imagination that these guys are fighting in front of me in the first place. Mm. Nothing's going on. So we have a comment here, and I'll get to you, Yulia, just a second. Comment, I feel I'm doing a similar thing to access a feeling state without needing the external trigger. In this case, spontaneous samadhi without being in the presence of an external master. Lovely, lovely. Um, I don't have a definition of samadhi. Um, anyone would like to look that up, go ahead, or this person, Roz, is it Roz or Raz? Um, maybe you can let us know what it is. I have a feeling of what it is. Um, but yeah, it would be nice to let people know what you mean by that. Oh, I love you. Thank you, Mary. Okay, let's have Yulia. Come on. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> yeah, girl. You yeah. want to come on camera? Um, sure. I just came back from the beach, but I can still come on camera. Me too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got the definition of samadhi. Oh, okay, cool. You want me to read it? Hey, Yulia. Yeah. Okay. Hey. A state of intense concentration achieved through meditation. In Hindu yoga, this is the this is regarded as the final stage at which union with the divine is reached before or at death. And if yeah. you read some other descriptions, there are more, there are stages of Samadhi. Okay. <laughs> Very complex Sanskrit terms too. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So I was sensing that you, you know, it's just like going from this, this feeling like there's no way out. Right. There's no way out. These guys aren't going to get it. That's right. the same as there's no way out to, oh, it's already occurred. And the feeling is just, it's a, it's like the feeling just transforms, uh, you know, and, and that's how, you know, you don't need a substance. What people do to try to get to that is to do some kind of substance, like some, maybe take a cigarette or, you know, even could be essential oil. There's nothing wrong with it or anything. Um, it could be, it could be something mild, some food, could be some LSD, could be, you know, alcohol, whatever. But, you know, it's, a, it's like the, the mind goes for, the only reason the mind is going for this substance is, is not believing that it's already within us. You know, it's a, all the mind's power. So it's like a magic trick, the mind using that particular thing to get an effect. And if you just remind yourself that nothing is giving you an effect in the world, you start to get the, you, you know, you start to feel these kinds of sensations that are unusual, unusually blissful. You start to sense these kind of sensations because it's like, it's like those are already there. That's actually natural for you. It's just that you've been tricking yourself into thinking that you can get to a better feeling or a worse feeling from something like something has cause and effect. You know, we're going to, we're going to see through this cause and effect thing in the world through persistence. And recognizing that nothing has an effect, nothing has an effect, that nothing that you can do or say or think, you know, can have an effect on something else. It's, that, it's only that self-belief, it's only that self-belief, okay, that has all the effects, that has all the effects. So you feel, you get the feeling, and the feeling shifts, and then the thinking shifts, the self-belief shifts, see? The self-belief shifts over to the self-belief that stands for who you are. It's like you're always expressing self-belief, but it's just like, what self are you believing in? 
interesting. That's it. So, Yulia, hooray. Hey. <laughs> yeah, this, this is all fun. I wanted to join the party. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're in. Beginning, I'm, I'm, I was late. You're not late. You can't be Just late. got out of the Gulf of Mexico with the dolphin. Oh, how beautiful. <laughs> I just saw a dolphin really close. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Um, yeah, and, and a really interesting topic. I, I was going to talk about one thing, but again, this reminded me of something else. Uh, there's this one Russian author I really like. He's contemporary. Um, it's a mix of satire and uh, Buddhism. Okay. The way he writes, at least the way I see it. Uh huh. Um, in it, it is to an extent. And the one of his late last books was very much about it. And um, in it, he described sort of you know through his characters a view of, I guess, getting these different stages of loss of self and the bliss of that. Yes. So you get to a point where there's like, there isn't even anybody to feel good. Yes. You know? In, and I mean, I, I, I never had that experience, but from that description, it's just, it's exhilarating to read that, you know, uh -huh. you lose that to the point where you realize there isn't even no need to feel good because there's uh -huh. no need to feel good. <laughs> yeah. Because the feeling is through the Yeah. Body. And like compared to the previous stage where there was somebody to feel good, that feels like, uh, that, that, like that sucked basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Somebody that needed to feel good or great or blissful, you know? Right. Yeah. So it's amazing while having all those, um, let's say for me, I guess they're mental constructs because they're not like the everyday experience, right? But they're mental constructs that I like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Yeah. There's no problem with that. But, I, but I'm very, very much embraced it, you know, but... I can't say I've had that exact, that exact experience, you know? And I just had what you talked about some time ago, or maybe in your book, about how when you were in, into a Vipassana, you realized you had murderous thoughts. Good. I mean, they were not maybe exactly murderous, but kind of like wishing you could squash someone like a cockroach, kind of. Yes. And catching myself thinking that, you know? Good. Mm. And that's that's under and, and realizing how strong the pull of that is how the um some words conversation can set me off where i can feel like i'm completely on fire and how again that inner dialogue goes on and on and on in fact this it this happened yesterday and it goes on for the second day now i keep you know catching myself being again involved in that dialogue talking to that person to whom i don't want to talk <laughs> so that's and, then, and of course she's a relative she's a fairly close like i don't have any cousin brothers or sisters she's a cousin with whom we've been close and we're kind of like almost like sisters when we were kids but she uh -huh. lives in the country and we don't see each other much but we send messages to each other and it's like not the first time maybe third or fourth time we're having like a a, a messaging blow up oh yeah yeah how like, funny yes and it's and it's, i felt like oh she's just you know and then there's a whole list of how she is <laughs> yes yes so so the so the thing is when with something like that and i noticed something go go on or try to go on try to start to go on in my mind this weekend where the thought projection will get started and then you know once you recognize that it's a thought projection you just turn it's really simple you just turn your attention to the feeling. Keep on turning your attention to the feeling over and over and over again. And that's what gives these thought projections no effect. It takes away all of their effects. See, it, you just go, just keep on going back to the feeling. It's not like trying to stop the thought projections. That's where, that's where people get messed up. Because in trying to stop the thought pro projections, I heard, Muji say at one time, it's like dressing like a kite and going in the wind. <laughs> right. Or like Alan Watts says, when you <laughs> announce that you're planning to do this or, you know, to become spiritual or something. Yeah. Just, you know, <laughs> the ego is up for the attack. Like, <laughs> right. So it's like, it's, it's like, like I'm a target. 
Yeah, it's like you welcome that thought projection because you know what it is. You know what it is. But when you go into the feeling effect, because the feeling comes before the thought projection. Remember, we talked about this before. I think we were talking about it. Right, our- right. But it's not necessarily conscious, you know, the feeling. It's totally conscious. You're just hiding it from yourself. It's all conscious. It's all consciousness. But you're keeping it hidden. You're making it, you're making it look like that so you don't know. So it, it all happens, you know, like as a split second thing. It all arises as a one bundle, you know. That's right. You just don't see the order. So tempted to say things. So tempted to say things. Engage in them, and you know, and it kind of draws you deeper and deeper. Yeah. Where my cousin kept sending me messages after I stopped talking, and I uh-huh. kept looking in them, and like, I'm not gonna answer. But then, well, why not answer? I could say this, and then like, I'm not gonna answer. You know? <laughs> ridiculous <laughs> yeah so even so even the even the banter like I, i'm gonna answer i'm not gonna answer things like that even that talking back and forth that's still just thought projections and still it, it's still just a it's like a smoke screen it's like a distraction so that you don't get the feeling you don't have a choice in whether you answer her or not that both those voices are both not yours you know you really don't have a choice so that leaves you open to answer if that's what needs to be. It leaves you totally open when you recognize that you don't have any choice. You don't need to follow those thought projections at all. And it's totally safe to turn all of your attention back to the feeling effect instead. See, that leaves you open. It's not saying I'm going to do something or I'm not going to do something because you're not identifying with any of those thoughts. Those thoughts may be saying that, but they have no effect to identify you as a, as a body, basically. Yeah, and I was thinking something similar, like at that moment and then a couple of days ago when I was feeling particularly just pissed off at my kids again. <laughs> and they, they didn't do anything. It was just, well, maybe I... Just, I guess I felt disappointment. Yeah. Felt disappointment and felt uh, plain like they don't like me or something. Yeah. Like that, you know, and they don't, like, they just, just stuff like that. It's, um, and I was talking to my boyfriend about it, um, and he said a very simple thing, like, but you still love them. You can still love them at this moment. And I, like, at myself and thought like, do I even feel what is called love right now? And what'd you find? You no, know, it would, in those moments, it's, it's like, it's totally, um, it excludes love. That's right. That's right. You can only have one or the other at a time. And, and, you know, like I said earlier, it's all a projection of self-belief. It's either the self-belief that resonates with love or the self-belief that resonates with guilt. The disappointment is a guilty self-projection, okay? So that's why you cannot feel love at the same time as you feel the guilty self-projection. That's why you get the feeling effect. When you get the feeling effect from yourself, it's kind of like, you know, on the surface of things, you're protecting them from your thought projections because you're getting the you're getting the feeling effect from yourself. It's almost like you're turning the thought projections back the other way so they get dissolved in the feeling. You can, you can totally have that, you know, and one of them, one of them that helps is, um, is just kind of like, it's kind of like an affirmation. You can say, um, I can have peace instead of this because <laughs> it's up to you. Cause you have the dominion. You're the one who can have peace instead of this. You know, I've noticed, I noticed myself projecting just this past weekend about my daughter. I was spending a weekend with her and I, I noticed myself projecting and it seemed to be, I'm going to say seemed to be about her because I know it's not really about her. And when the projection starts up, when the project, projecting starts up at all, whatever it's saying, it's like, I know it's not about her. I know that's not about her, but if I feed into it, if I feed into it at all, it's going to come out as something. It's going to come out me- as meanness or something like that, you know, shortness, meanness, anything like that. But when the projection just gets started, it's like when there's, there's just willingness to feel it right now. And in willingness to feel it right now, it doesn't have to turn into some kind of expression of, of guilt. Like, ah, you're doing it wrong. 
it and just seems that, that. And it just seems like I am feeling it. You know, I am feeling it. How can you not feel it when it's so intense? Especially well, the well, episode who, with my cousin when I was just burning up. You know, with <laughs> yeah. You well, well, well. Here's the thing. It, it seems like you're getting the feeling effect of it while you're projecting, while you're projecting thoughts. It seems like you are getting the feeling effect of it, but you're not getting this full cycle. Like each, every single one of the feelings, it's like an arch and it'll rise and fall. You know, if you're there for the full feeling effect, you'll feel it rise and fall. And then those thoughts will have no meaning for you anymore. That's like really getting the feeling effect. Yes, you're going to feel it. Everyone does. And it feels bad to feel that feeling. But as you're running away from it, you're not allowing it to run its full cycle. You're not allowing it to do that within your presence. It's still doing it, but not within your presence. And you're holding on to it and getting the effect of it prolonging, like the prolonging. See, when there's, when there's willingness to get the feeling effect, you'll see it rise and fall and recognize that it has no meaning. Yeah, it's not justified by anything. You were, you were talking about samsara, which means re basically the wheel of reincarnation. Okay. Yeah. There's like an explanation about how how you incarnate, and I don't remember the whole chain, but part of it is that like clinging arises and aversion arises. Yes. And the clinging towards you know what feels as good and aversion from what feels as bad. So what you're talking about is the aversion, the running. Yeah. Like, I don't, want to feel, so I don't want to feel this. So the thoughts are about not feeling that. Yes. Yes. Cause it's like, whether it's I answer, not whether not. I don't answer, whether I'm going to say this or that, it's all about not feeling that. And yes, that's right. I'm a school feeling like you want to squash someone. It's about that too. Yes. So the, the, so the wanting to squash someone, that's you wanting to, wanting to get squashed. Right. Or not wanting to have that feeling basically. You yeah. want to, Watch that feeling. Yes. But underneath that, it underneath that is a is a self-belief that knows, quote, that you're guilty and deserving of punishment. That's why there's that wanna squash kind of thing. Because it's being projected. You can look at it this way too. It's like as soon as there's that idea that you separated yourself from reality and believing that now you're now that you're deserving of death. Now you're deserving of death. This whole universe is make-believe. The whole universe is made up to run from that, to run from that punishment that you thought you deserved. And, and you know, in, in the end, there's an apparent death still because there's this death wish that you can't get away from. The only way to get away from the, the, this, death, this death wish is to see it through, to see that feeling of it through and come back to love. See, come back to loving this thing with your cousin. It's a huge gift. It's a, it's an opportunity to see through finally what it is that's making you want to be murderous. It's really good. It's really awesome. So like you start to, see <laughs> you, yeah, you start to see it as a benefit and you'll start to see how much you appreciate your cousin and how much she loves you and how much she's giving you because it's like before this whole manifestation, uh, before this whole manifestation of this uh, of this interaction that you're having on text messages, you two make an agreement to show up for each other this way. <laughs> I'm, I mean, it's like before as in behind it, behind the scenes, like every moment from moment to moment, it's like we're agreeing to act for our, for each other. And when you, when you get that feeling effect of it, you get that fulfilling effect. If you could see through it, you sense the great gratitude. And it's like, the more you feel like you want to squash her, the, <laughs> the, the, the greater the, the degree you could feel gratitude for her. Oh my God. I feel it already. <laughs> good. Good. Cause there was a couple, there was a couple wisdom dialogues back where I was talking about having gone through something like that with my sister. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I don't have a sister. This is the closest I have to a sister, you know. Yeah, this is a similar kind of energy right. like that. You know, you could have right. great gifts from it. And it's not by pushing her away. It's by taking her in and embracing her, you know. Which also doesn't mean any particular action. Like, I need to continue engaging in any dialogue. You don't even have a choice in that. Right. Exactly. Like, okay, here's another thing. Don't confuse the levels. 
there's levels here. One level is one level is manifestation. That's the I same keep thing. forgetting. I know, I know, but I keep forgetting. Like I know what you mean. Like there's <laughs> you you welcome her into your heart. You welcome her into your heart. The manifestations take care of themselves. You know, right. in my case, you know, my sister was welcomed in into my heart, and I felt a great appreciation to, for her for showing me, you know, she's, she's showing me how I'm upholding self-belief. That's always what's going on. She's showing how, me how I'm permitting self, these reflections, uh, these projections uh, co to, that come from an upset feeling to keep on feeding my self-belief. So that's the gift. It's like, oh, I don't have to do that anymore. Oh my goodness, she's so great. Thank you so much. And it's like, not like she has to change or anything. And then, and then I was, and, that, and then, you know, I, I was made to communicate with her. I, I did not make a choice to communicate with her. We do not make choices like that. Mm -hmm. I, I, make that kind of, I was made to communicate with her instead of project onto her, instead of send her some kind of uh, message back that's more projection, you know, I was made to communicate with her and she could feel it. And it went back to love you know and both of us in gratitude see yeah i can't say we never had moments that are love with my cousin but, but there are quite a few of these <laughs> yeah and, yeah it's and it's amazing how it is more with family than with anyone else oh definitely right. yeah that's why that's why we're put together we have agreements like that because we can, we have work to do together, you could say. You, we have work in healing this self-belief, but which is basically resolving it, resolving the guilty self-belief. And we have all of the power of creation behind us in that. So it's gonna keep on coming up again and again until you get that, until you get what it is. When you get what it is, then you don't need it anymore. You don't have a need for it anymore. Even if you have some reverberation, like she sends you something that used to get a trigger, or maybe it gets a little, it gets a trigger and you see the thought projection right away. And you're like, oh, I remember when I used to follow those. And you just come back to the feeling. And you, you know, you just get more and more gratitude. And you know, your attitude is like, oh, thank you for letting me know. You remember when I <laughs> back to the guilty self-belief you know that's like a concept that sounds right but again like if we start really looking at it like how did i ever get a guilty self-belief why why you know um and then i listen to like i said to other things sometimes to alan watts for example whom i like a lot and uh, in one of his lectures i think i heard something that you know, again, I, you hear it over and over in different forms, how yeah. we're used to thinking that we end where, you know, where our skin, the, with the limits of our skin, right? Yeah. Like, there's something that's put into a bag of skin, right? Yeah. It's the outside world that acts on us, where, you know, even not in, just in terms of spirituality, but in terms of uh, um, whatever you call it, science, physics, whatever. Yeah mind you you realize that that's not the case because you can't even um define anyone without their environment you can't see anyone when if there is no environment so it's an, i mean it's just like is that like the thing where you feel like you separated yourself where you gotta believe that you're somehow separate from everything else and you're like a thing that resides in the bag of skin you know and and has a mind and a an existence that is somehow separate from it all. Yeah, you could say that before the manifestation of the world, before the manifestation of the universe, however you want to call it, that's everything that you perceive. Before having perception, there was a, a nagging sense that you separated yourself and you're guilty and you're and you're deserving of death. And that's why the whole you know skin skin thing and you know the skin suit and everything manifest it's an attempt to run away from death it's an attempt to get away from death but this whole thing the whole thing also appears to end in death because of that death wish like you're not getting away from that guilty self-belief and the more there's projections the more deaths need to be made you could say time gets extended 
the illusion of time gets ext extended and it's really a gift because the more time is extended the more opportunities you have to heal that guilty self-belief so that even when you're not ma manifesting a world you're not feeling this guilty feeling because you're not feeling the guilty feeling you step right into heaven where you really are and that's what you want and that's why you make the world so that you can step back into heaven because through through manifesting the world that's where you get all the lessons you need to undo that guilty thought yes and i mean i did throughout this whole thing also reminded myself you know that that i am i may that they're my, my cousin is me my kids are me yeah there's like just like the whole world that which I basically made, you know, we, we yeah. all this or there's no we because there's only one of us, like you said. And there is, and, and, you know, and it is a benefit. That's really big too. This is a benefit. <laughs> whatever it is, whatever thought for Joe, okay, I know this is a benefit. It's like kind of like saying, show me the gift in this. Show me, let me see. The same kind of thing. You know, I'm just saying it different ways so you can really feel it that this is a benefit, you know, whatever it is, whatever big energy is arising or anything, this is a benefit. You know, I said that to my family member that this weekend when, you know, she was really um, distraught. I said, this is a benefit. It's a breakthrough, you know, and she's thinking that she shouldn't be that way. I, I know I shouldn't do this. I know this is a burden. I was, and I was like, no, it's awesome. That's the case. That's the case for everything. Yeah, like bad stuff is good, basically. <laughs> well, there's, there's, there's just, there, it's just, you know, bad and good are only perceptions. Of course, yes, yes. Yeah. So it's like, it, of course, it's all a benefit. But, you know, when something seems to be bad, that's when it seems like it's definitely not a benefit. Like, I have to get out of this. But when you're real, when you're willing to at least allow the thought, just allow the thought that this is a benefit, it kind of blows your mind in the midst of something like that. It really opens you up to the gifts. Yeah, I do remember that. You know, good, bad are two sides of reality, of duality. Yes. Yes. So it's remembering in the moment that thoughts are trying to project from you. That's, a, that's where the communication, the true communication comes in because that's when you're allowing, the, you know, the self-belief, you know, it, it's just a little bit of willingness that lets that self-belief that's based on love to be your dominant feeling. See, that's why the feeling is so, it, it's so shifty. It can change so fast. It doesn't matter which self-belief it's made of. They're both illusion, illusions, they're both illusions of self, but it's always like, I can have peace instead of this. Yeah, and you know, it's also, I think, Laura, I didn't hear exactly what Lori's story was, but she was saying, thing, she was saying something about people not getting it. You know, part, yeah. part of the upset with the cousin was, was, you know, about, it was talking about things in the world, let's say, apparently. But it seemed like she was not getting something. And as far as, you know, talking about this perspective and non-duality and all that, it seems like there's no way to even bring that into the conversation. So, um, yeah, there's this thing where you think like, oh, how, we, we, where you start thinking like, well, people are not getting it or they can't get it. Which means that you're forgetting again that those people are you. Yes. They already got it. Everyone got it, including you. You're just dreaming. Right. You're just dreaming that you're not getting it and projecting it onto other people. Right, something like that. There's like, there's totally nobody out there who is not getting it. Right. That's right. And if I'm having that experience, it's just whatever, another um, reverberation. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you can observe, you can observe that people are not interested in knowing right now. You're, you can observe that people are not interested in knowing it. They want to keep on, they want to keep on having this kind of experience. You can observe that, but you know, when it's like, they're not getting it, they do get it. They're just putting on a show for you. Doesn't mean you have to engage in it or anything. Right, right. It's yeah. an invitation. Yes. Yeah. 
Yes, to be gentle with yourself. See, it's only, it's only your, your upset feeling. It's only your upset feeling that's making the perception of them not getting it into a problem. You know, it could be, it, 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 you know, the having the perception, oh, the, the perception they're not getting it and knowing that it's a show, it gives you all of the freedom. It gives you all of the freedom in that. I just go, oh, okay. Thank you for letting me know, you know, and it's not, it's, it's not like you're, it's not like you're having to um, make it into some kind of confusion for yourself. And no one, and, and everyone's on a, on their exact right path too. Right. When my family member that said to me, uh, I said, I said, oh, oh, it's, it's not, it's okay. It's not really happening. You know, because she was she was guilting herself for having a breakdown. I go, it's okay. It's not really happening. And whatever seems to be occurring is a benefit. And she's like, it is happening. And I just said, okay. Oh, yeah. You mentioned that earlier. Yes. Yes. Or like, you tell somebody like, you, yes, don't and she stopped feel right guilty. you don't need to guilt people or feel guilty. Like, what? I'm not feeling guilty. I feel I'm a victim here. I heard that before. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just okay because that because you feel that you you get the feeling effect of it. You're willing to get the feeling effect of it. You don't have to get into it with them at all. Right. Or sometimes you think you do. Yeah, you know if you feel like you need to be someone's teacher or something. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and then the. But well, that's uh, so often a setup to get frustrated because you got bad students. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. You know, I, I've I've had people on occasion tell me that um, I need to teach them something. I I need to teach them something. So I need to answer these questions, and I could tell that these questions are just leading to supporting an argument. So mm -hmm. I, I just say no, thank you. And you know, if they push me, I'll just let them know, you know what, when I'm your teacher, I'll know you'll come with a certain kind of energy. I'll know. <laughs> I can tell the difference. It's okay. Uh, but, and then, and then isn't that, isn't that your projection? Isn't that just your projection? Yes. And I take full responsibility for it. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. And I'm still not led to answer those questions. Okay, well, here is a question that I'm uh, led to elaborate on for a friend. So I was asked to elaborate on this particular Facebook post, and it starts out with, no feeling is justified. The body does not feel. All feelings are projected by the mind. The only purpose of feeling is to make the body out to be real and vulnerable to attack. How is this information helpful? It's not at all to the ego. But when you're willing to stop agreeing with thoughts that justify feelings, this is the big part right here. When you're willing to stop agreeing with thoughts that justify feelings, every feeling gets used to unhook the mind from body identification and reclaim eternal life. Okay? So, you know, I've, I've heard all of your feelings are valid and stuff like that. All of your feelings are valid. Okay. Yes. That's a, okay. That's fine. It's good. It, it's a certain, um, you could say it's a certain place around the path, along the path, you could say, because, um, you know, first it's like, oh, your feelings, they're don't, they don't mean anything to me. Your feelings don't mean anything to me. You're just, whatever you say, no, you're nothing. And then it's more healing to be like, okay, you know, your feelings, they're valid. That's more healing. And then it's even more, more healing than that to recognize there's actually no justification for any feeling because all feeling comes from self-belief. All feeling comes, the, the whole reason for, for feeling at all is because of believing that you are an individual separate from reality. Otherwise, there's no feeling and there's no need for feeling because bliss actually doesn't include feeling. The state of bliss, which is what you are, 
actually doesn't include feeling. So feeling is like a substitute for reality. Feeling is a substitute for reality. And then the perception that comes off of feeling that's projected from feeling, that's a distraction. That's to distract you. So you don't recognize that the feeling is of substitute for reality. Okay, so when you recognize that no feeling is justified or you're just willing to recognize that no feeling is justified, and I mean every feeling. Someone came on there and asked me, are you talking about emotional or are you talking about physical? And I said, both. I said, I'm talking about both. So say you're, you're, you wake up in the morning and you feel tired. Notice how your body immediately goes to what could ma be making me feel tired. That is a thought to justify the feeling, okay? Mm -hmm. Say you feel a little bit sleepy and you're, like, and, and, and you're like, oh, your mind immediately goes to, what did I eat? Did I take any substance? Is this why I'm feeling sleepy? No, all matters of fatigue, all matters of tiredness, even tiredness when you go to bed at night, it's all a projection, it's all a feeling, it's all a projection and you know, these are being believed automatically. And remember, we go back to that wheel again. We, we go back to that wheel again. Every time you get the feeling, like say you get the feeling of tiredness over here, and you agree with the thought projection that says, this tiredness is because of this. It's like pointing. To, this is tiredness is because of this. It automatically feeds your guilty self-belief. It goes really fast. It happens really, really fast. And if, you know, and if you would be willing to be vigilant, and you will be willing to be vigilant, it's only a matter of time before you're willing to be vigilant because you see how much relaxation you get out of it. It's not hard. It may seem hard to the ego, like, wow, this is a lot. Can I really go on and on like this, always being this vigilant to, you know, even something that seems to feel good, even if something that seems to feel good, say you go in a, for a swim in the ocean, you apparently go for a swim in the ocean, Ah, just getting into this water feels so good. It's okay, nothing's wrong with that. Just check your mind and recognize, and you know, being willing to recognize that you're making it up. You're making up that feeling. Nothing's giving you the feeling. Good, bad, indifferent. Same thing goes for emotional stuff type thoughts. You know, if you're feeling if, if you're feeling guilty about something, it's not because of anything you said or did. It's not because of anything you said or, or did. It's because of guilty self-belief. It's because of guilty self-belief. That's the only thing that's going to make you feel as if, you're, as, as if you're upset in any way, in any way at all. Okay? And, even, and, and it even comes in the form of a good feeling that's like dependent on something. Like say um, Molly, or not Molly. Hey, Molly. I see your name there. Lorian mentioned mentioned earlier that uh, you know this this sense like she feels so good when she's on edibles like when she takes edibles my goodness it just feels so good and I feel so happy you know just in recognizing that you made that feeling for yourself you get you you use the edibles to make it like a magic trick but really the power is within you to have that feeling of happiness and that doesn't have anything to do with the edibles. So that's how ba <laughs> you want to say Molly and Splits. <laughs> yeah. That too, Molly. <laughs> so it's like, it, it, it's like the, the same thing. It gives you that, that feeling like, like the edible did it for you. Like the edible was what get it, did it for you. Um, yeah, the, the splits, I don't know if you get the same effect, uh, the same, same effect on you, you know, yeah. using your yeah. edible, uh, but, but, you know, with, with the spliffs, there's this, also this te sense of tiredness that occurs. <laughs> there also seems to be this sense of, this sense of tiredness. And, you know, at one point I was having spliffs with one of my friends and all of a sudden my eyes just went half mass and I was like, Oh my gosh, I am so just not going to make it. I have to go to bed. And I started to say it was because of the spliffs and completely like stop myself and go, no, it is definitely not because of the spliffs. The, the spliffs do not have that kind of power over me. And even if you have the perception that it is, you can, you can claim what's true. And in claiming what's true, you're lessening these kinds of effects. You're lessening these kinds of effects to uphold the self-belief 
I mean, this weekend, I was on a weekend with my daughter. She's, you know, she's a grown daughter. She's like, she's 27. It was for her birthday. She's turned 27. And the very first night, I found myself drinking three, three alcohol drinks, you know. And then the next thing you know, I'm feeling so sick. So sick. And, you know, immediately, I'm like, oh, no. I know this is not from the alcohol. I know this is not from the alcohol. And what it's shown to me is I've had this story since I was a teenager that I'm such a lightweight. I'm such a lightweight. I could barely drink. And you know, it's kind of like a, it's, it's almost like for me, it's like, it, it's like this false innocence kind of thing. It's like this false innocence kind of thing. Even when I hear myself say it right now, I could sense the feeling. It's kind of like a false innocence. Like I'm more innocent than a person that, that drinks a lot, you know, cause I can't really, if the story is I can't really find myself drinking that much because I'm such a lightweight. So this such a lightweight story plays out as in be, feeling really sick, you know, feeling really sick. So while I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing it, I'm like, no, no, I'm not buying that. I'm not buying that it's drinking alcohol and I can see it shift the feeling, you know, it shifts, shifting, 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 and it's just so shifty. It's so, still, you know, trying to get my attention. That self-belief is really trying to get my attention, saying, yeah, you're really sick from the alcohol. And the way I know is a thought projection comes about, I'm not going to drink tomorrow, as if I have a choice in that. There's no choice. So then in recognizing, again, it's no, there's, no, there's going to be no choice whether, or, whether there's drinking or not tomorrow because I'm not really drinking anything anyways, and I'm not really getting any effect off of it anyways, you know? So then when the next day comes around, because it's a, it's a weekend, so then when the next day comes around, you know, there wasn't any draw toward drinking until like one glass of wine at dinner time. Okay, fine. Um, no effects. Um, and then the next day after that, the drinking started happening much early. In fact, before noon, before noon, still no effects no effects. It was like, then there's like three of them and no effects and absolutely just no effects, no perceivable effects and not, and, and not as in, okay, let me see, let me try to drink more. You know, if that thought even occurs to me, it's always like, okay, that is a self-belief. That's a projection. That's a self-belief. See. Wow. It's not, it's not like we have to test it out. We can't, we don't have a choice in it. Right. So it's like, there's no choice in it. See. I find myself still engaging in conversations with people about supposedly reality of food, of medications, of effects like that. And, and keeping the belief that that's not real kind of secret for myself because I yeah find that anybody, most people, except for a few maybe, um, would have been entertained the idea. Like my kid waves his food on the scale and eats protein powder because he power lifts, you know? Yeah. If I start telling him, you know, something about this being ridiculous and not real, or I know he's going to laugh at me. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, you, you don't have to and you won't be led to share like that unless it's necessary, you know. Yeah, uh, and then I get kind of drawn into it and I start discussing because I start trying to like slip in different tricks into it, you know, <laughs> into the conversation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like it, it now. Now, look at this. This is a this is a really big one. So um, this is a this kind of thought. This kind of thought, this vein of thought, like something that, that, like something affects the body, like protein powder or anything like that. If you feel any resistance to the thought, you're making it real. If it, if it makes you want to tell them something, it, you're, it's your making it real. See. I see. No, I'm more, it's more like I engage in conversations about the benefits of different things. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, don't, I don't, I don't really like feel, I sometimes even feel inspired. Like he tells me, yeah. mom, you could eat, eat this or that. And I go like, Hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling inspired. 
Yes. And you know, I've had, I've had people, you know, say, say I'm feeling really tired because I screwed up because I stayed up too late, too late last night mm -hmm. and I'll just listen to them, but I'll know that that's not the reason they're feeling tired. And you know, if they're open to it and I'll feel that they're open to it, I, I could sense that they are open to it. Then, you know, the, the words are going to come out of me. The words are just going to come out. Then, it, then it'll be shared. But if they're not open to it, then if they're not if they're not open to it, I don't follow any thoughts that they need to know anything. I need to teach them anything, so I can I can listen to this to this kind of basically delusion, and just not agree with it in within myself, but not have an outward expression that I'm not agreeing with it or agreeing with it. I'm just listening. See. And, and well, I find myself saying things like, well, you could sleep in or something, you know. Yeah, you could sleep in. And early you know? tonight or something like that. You know? And I'll get asked, like, especially by family members, what should I do? What should I do? And I'll just let them know you can't make a wrong decision. You can't make a wrong decision. But what do you think I should do? And I really don't have a thought about what you should do. I really, I could help you. I could, I could help, you know, maybe ask some questions that might help you, help you see and, and come to whatever uh, decision you're going to naturally come to anyways, you know, but I don't have any, uh, any idea in my own mind about what you should do. Right. If you, if you feel like you want to tell someone, not like what they should do, but like, well, like I see this way of doing something. Mm hmm I mean, I, I do that sometimes <laughs> <laughs> that I, not that I feel like I know the right way or that there is a right way. Right. Yeah. And it, you know, it's just, it's all comes down to watching because you don't have a choice what comes out of your mouth anyways, right. but there is a deep listening that can occur. There's a deep listening that can occur. And it's like listening through feeling because, you know, like I said before, there's two teachers in the mind. There's two teachers, one that represents guilt and one that represents love. So it's like in this deep li listening, it's like constantly allowing yourself to be more gentle with yourself, be more and more gentle. Molly, I saw your hand and I would love to bring you, you on. Um, and we can do that right now if you're still up for it. Yay. So, oh, yay. There it is. She comes to the top. Let's see it. Yay. Would you like to come on video, Molly? No. Okay. You're happy with your voice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting on your the back lower lanai that you love. By the oh, I'm so glad it's mine. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. I love you. I had so I much fun too. with you this weekend. That was so awesome. Much fun. Yeah. Yay. Um, so yeah, like I just was reminded by some of the things you were saying, like, um, that I am the doer, you know, um, has come in like super strong and it's been, you know, a, seems like a while now that, um, it comes back to that same theme, like, oh my God, I've tried all different avenues of looking at food and now if you look at everything like everything is bad for you all food <laughs> it's all bad for you isn't that awesome <laughs> like you, almost every single food has somebody saying something about it <laughs> that's right and, you know just noticing that the guilty feeling um for you know what i ate or what i did or didn't do the day before and like self-care and practice and I also noticed when I was really um doing a lot of my practices and workouts that were like that it felt so good and transformative to my body I also watched myself get attached like yes. to what was happening and get really into it and then it and like yeah like let's keep going yeah get even better yeah everything. and everything is going so well and then um and then boom, the opposite. Oh my God, only a couple weeks of, you know, 
moving and not doing the regular practices and things like that and everything is horrible you know and um just this real strong um attachment to to what i'm doing and to doing am i doing um like taking care of myself enough am i doing the right things and now the creeping in i'm getting older so now oh i'm wearing my body out and it's like this <laughs> it's this beast that the more I try to overcome it, like, no, no, now take care of yourself and take care of your skin and get enough rest and what you, you know, eat the perfect thing. And, and then it's like, ah, it's, it's like, um, you're chasing something that you can never get, you know, yeah. and I'm older today. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, hurry, do something. And um, anyways, I also like check in with you or wisdom dialogues and I feel so far apart when when I'm in that state then I'm like feeling very split like I don't know what what is going on you know what I mean yeah and that's a benefit I'm at. Hmm? of course that's a benefit yeah <laughs> yeah it's having me in this really deep contemplation because there's this like when I'm stuck in that spot and then I think about wisdom dialogues per se, or for instance, yeah, um, or yoga, there's like, the, the, then there's this wide open landscape of um, all these like different ways of looking at it. Mm -hmm. um, so it feels like a benefit because it's like stretching me, but it also yeah. has me go okay maybe you just need to stop thinking about all of this because I am in like this deep contemplation like what is going on you know what I mean yeah when I'm in between and I'm noticing the doer and then I'm I'm no I'm trying to coach myself through it and then there's this whole like <clears throat> I don't even know what is going on here well you could always simplify you could always simplify by just getting the feeling Right. I always skip that. That's the thing. Yeah, what that's the, that? that's a sneaky thing. That's a sneaky thing because all of those thoughts, you know, and, and you know, that's really confusion speaking. Those are projections of thought and they're coming from feeling. So all you have to do is turn it back to feeling. And you know, what's really helpful for me to turn it back to feeling is something like this is a benefit because then I'm safe to go back to feeling. Or I can have peace instead of this, you know, because really the, the draw to the draw to go into thought projection is feeling unsafe to feel unsafe to just feel your feelings. Oh so, my God. Yes. Yeah. Just to be there for the rise and the fall. You see that there's nothing, nothing is really happening. And, you know, Things seem to be intensifying right now, you know, Molly. Things really seem to be intensifying right now for people. I'm noticing the different, you know, things where people are having uh, break, apparent breakdowns. I call them breakthroughs. I don't call them breakdowns where they're, they're crying and they're upset and they're confused and stuff like that. But, you know, really it's all a benefit. And you know, it's funny. When I, was over at, when I was over at your place, I was having a conversation with Malcolm um, the next day after the party, I was having a conversation with this sweet guy, Malcolm. He did a gong bath for us and everything. Just a really cute, sweet energy. And, um, and I just found myself saying, you know, none of us are ever challenged. None of us are ever challenged. It's just that we get the feeling effect of challenged by believing that we're something that we're not. And as soon as I said that, I started tearing up. I started crying. <laughs> it was the funniest thing. I'm like, and I had no idea why I was crying. I'm like, and now I'm crying, so let's have a hug. <laughs> you know? Can you repeat that again? Uh, which part? What you said. About the, now I'm crying, so let's have a hug? Before that, yeah. What made, that made you cry? Oh, okay. So, uh, so I just found myself sharing, uh, just automatically sharing that um, whatever it is, you know, we don't get challenged. We do right. not get challenged. There's no challenge for us. We get, we get the effect of being challenged from believing that we're something that we're not. From believing that we're something that we're not. We get the effect of being challenged. See? 
And then I didn't, I didn't know it. I started, once I said that, you know, I just started crying. Like I tear, tear up really fast. You know, I thought it might be from the air conditioner because I was under the air conditioner, but I was like, no, that's not how it goes. Um, I start tearing up really fast and not realizing, you know, on my drive home, some things, some things transpired where, you know, I had the, I had the perception of my daughter getting really distraught, like really, really distraught all of a sudden and, 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 you know, getting this sense, like she shouldn't be, she was saying that she shouldn't be. And all of a sudden getting the sense that I was being challenged and it went back to that. It was like, Oh, that was, there's, that was, that was, that was for, it was almost like I was crying at a time. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, and, you know, and, and having, and having this perception and she's just so upset and so distraught and like she feeling like she shouldn't be that way. And also saying that, uh, saying that it's, she's crying because I don't want to drive her where, where I'm driving her, you know? And I, and I told her, Hey, you know what? It's, it's true. I'm getting a sense that I don't want to be driving this far out of the way. I'd rather just go straight back home. But I know that's not about you. You know, I know that's not about you. And it's like, and, 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 you know, do you want to blame me for that? Do you want to blame me for the feeling? Do you want to blame me for the feeling that you're having right now? You know, and it just like showed, oh my goodness. It's like the, the, the premonition, like a premonition. Like, where is that coming from? The sense that, oh, you're, you, you cannot be challenged. You cannot be challenged. And I start to feel as if I'm being challenged. See? And it's like, no, you're not. Oh, everything's okay. <clears throat> yeah, so the, um, you can't be challenged because the one who would be challenged would just be the ego. It's a false sense of who you are. It's a false sense. Exactly. And the, and, and the, and the reflection that I'm getting is that I'm not doing it right because I'm not, because I'm not happy about driving all that way in the middle of the night. <laughs> mm -hmm. See, it's like that. It's like, Oh, you're not, you know, you're not, and then, and then it's making me upset. It's making me upset. And see, it's like, okay, I got a sense that I'm not happy about it, but then I know what that is. Like I get a sense that I'm not happy about it, but then I know what it is. And therefore that's why I'm not challenged by it. That's why I'm not challenged by it. And in that not, in, the, in that recognizing that no one can do anything to me, you know, and there's a, and, and there's a sense of trying to get that rise out of me, trying to get, oh, I'm doing this to you. I'm doing this to you. I'm, I'm burdening you. I'm, I'm doing this. You don't want to be here and you're, you're doing, no, I know that everything is a benefit. So thank you. I'm happy about this feeling that's arising right now. I'm happy about, and, and, and I'm happy that this is coming up right now. It's like a pimple. It's like a pimple that needs to be popped. See? Mm -hmm. so then everything so then everything is not a challenge it's like it, it's like a, it you know it isn't in the first place but it might get taken as if it is in a moment and then just seeing right through it and recognizing that no it's not and I appreciate this thank you and then everything can transform yeah that's how everything can transform it's like surrendering to whatever is happening and feeling the feelings. Yes, exactly. And, and, and nothing is happening. That's the thing. And that's what I, that's what I like to share with people too. You know, people, people say like, what is the, what is the value in all of this? What is the value in, in, in looking at what is, what it is that's making you feel upset. And it's like, because you're invulnerable. You're invulnerable to these things. These things arise and you're happy about it. You're happy about feeling like you're, you're happy like you're feeling like you don't want to go out of the way. Like a, a feeling arises that you don't want to go out of the way. But yes, and you don't have to deny the feeling. It's like, yes, there is a feeling like I don't want to go out of the way. And it's a benefit. I'm not going to make it about you. 
yes, you can feel me, and then it's not gonna still not gonna be about you. Are you gonna are, are you gonna make it about me? It's okay if you do. You know, you could blame me if you want for your feeling. It's okay. But is that what you want, or would you rather have peace? So it's like if you wake up and the feeling arises of like, oh, I don't want to do this today or, oh, I have so much to do or, oh, I didn't do that thing right. You then um, get excited about those feelings. And yes, just, because it's a breakthrough. You know, uh, you're just like, okay, awesome. I feel <laughs> horrible this morning apparently. And yeah. you just have you just embrace it more like like um evenly like everything you know i feel dehydrated I, you know all of the things that yeah really, dehydrated is a fun one dehydrated is a great one there's all kinds of scientific proof proof about that one yeah it's a big it's a big thing you know you ask someone for water i i, I found myself at at the bar and I was like, can I have a glass of water? And the answer is, yes, it's good to be hydrated. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it just makes me laugh. You know, I just laugh. <laughs> That's one of the main things I promote in my practice. It's good hydration. <laughs> the big one. You guys should hear what my dad says to this. Like, I spent all my childhood hanging out by the river on my own. And we didn't drink all day long. And I'm feeling fine. And I'm not going to drink now. Water, meaning. Oh, <laughs> that's good stuff. Yeah, <laughs> some people don't drink. And he's like, he's 78 years old and he's doing pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he refuses to buy into this thing. <laughs> like, yeah. Thirsty. It, yeah. And, you know, it, it's, a, it's, also, it's also, you know, in the illusion of things, a money-making thing. You know, this, this hydration thing. Hmm. But, but it's, but it's okay. You know, if that, if that's in your, if that's in your practice, if that's in your practice, like for me with the essential oils, I just started to rewrite some of my articles. I rewrote this article on sleep. In fact, Molly, your, your name is at the bottom of it. So if anyone wants some help on um, choosing essential oils or any herbal remedies uh, that has to do, have to do with sleep, they can contact you. Um, and it, yeah, that's a, that's on my blog. You know, I'll post it here so you guys can look at it because it's really fun to read. And you might get an idea of how you can still go about your practice, but also um, in recognizing the truth and recognizing what's really true. Let me go to blog. Well, in, in Ayurveda, every, um, every physical thing begins as a, like the first pillar of health is like psychology slash breath. So basically the thoughts, emotions create a certain breath pattern. And um, so therefore there are, there are dehydrating thoughts before there is dehydration. Yes. And there are hydrating thoughts before there is hydration or happening simultaneously, but definitely, yeah, the definitely the physical is, is a result of the mind from, from that perspective. Yep. So I put a link. It helps you. It also helps direct you back. I feel like so. Like if you consciously choose hydration in the world, like, and it it shifts your mind. You know what I mean? Like that's how plants work. They they like represent that wisdom. Okay. Um. Why you would use anything in this world? You know, to like heal you, like any herbs or or hydration is like, you, you could also think of it as like symbolic because you, you like the mind has maybe had a, a thought that takes it into a place of imbalance where it's needing something now. And then what looks to be in the external world comes in to help and heal, but shifts the mind. Like the way yeah. plants have a medicinal effect, but then they have a spirit essence. Yes, because they're communicating. So they're communicating. Yeah. yeah. So so that so anything anything in the world also cannot have an effect on the mind. It's quite the other way around. The mind is having an effect. The mind is making all of the effects, including the 
the, the making medicine, the medicine where it happens to be the mind yeah. is making all of those effects so it's just a matter of of accepting whatever effects you're making because you're making them and recognizing that that thing actually has no effect. Water cannot quench, quench your thirst because thirst is projected as in water. Now look, I'll just read you the first part of this so you can see how it goes. So I changed this around to where it's about sleep and essential oil. So sleep seems to be intricately connected to health. It used to say sleep is intricately connected to health. <laughs> So today I'm excited to share with you about essential oils that may help you get the appearance of improved sleep and ultimately help you to resolve the mistaken belief that energy and health are connected sleep in the first place. See, the yeah. mind uses the appearance of sleep, of deep restful sleep to make the effect of recovering from stress of everyday, everyday life. See, that's way more true. It's using the appearance of deep restful, restful sleep to make that effect, okay? However, when it appears to your mind that you are not getting enough sleep, your health will soon show it in many big and small ways because it appears to your mind that you're not getting enough sleep, okay? Mm -hmm. And then the perceived problem is made worse. So. How do you address the sleep issue while also resolving the mind's idea that sleep is necessary in the first place? That's how my article goes. That's how I'm changing all of my articles in, on, my, on my blog, miracle, blog.miraclebotanicals.com, um, one by one, to be more honest and truthful as to what it is. What is it? What, what's going on here when you use some kind of a remedy? You know, we sell essential oils and what... And, and what is really going on here when you're using a remedy like this? You know, if there's not anything wrong with it. Like when you, you know, when you feel cold, you might put a jacket on and get the effect that you're warmer, but it's not because you put a jacket on and you're not cold because of the environment. The environment doesn't affect you one bit. See? And as we see this more and more, this cause and effect thing, it's going to be wiped away. And that's really what's keeping it in, in this appearance that we need more manifestation, that we need more time. What we want to do, what we all really want to do is shorten time and eliminate it completely. Right. That does seem to be the theme, like I was trying to describe, like running out of time. Yes. Yeah. Oh, how fun. Yeah, because it seems like whenever it seems like you're overwhelmed and you don't have enough time to do all the yeah. stuff that you're doing, you're asking for more time. Right. Yeah. Right. You're not going to you're not going to run out of time. You're not going to run out of time. You're going to shorten it because you're going to realize that none of this stuff is meaningful and you're going to get that feeling. Yeah. And you're going to yeah. be happy to see any emotional turmoil within yourself or anyone else, even if they're, even if it seems like their emotional turmoil is because of you. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Molly. I love you so much. Love you. Okay. Aloha. Aloha. Yay. Anon's on too. Aloha, Anon. Okay, and I have Roz, Roz or Raz? I don't know. We're going to find out because we're going to allow them to talk. Aloha. Aloha. Oh, what a beautiful voice. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> Yay. Is it Roz um, or Raz? Uh, both. Both are good. Um, okay. I would say Raz. Okay, I'll take it. I love it. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to come on camera as well, but I don't seem to have that option on my Oh, then I'll on. put you on. Okay. We love putting people on camera. Yay, here he is. Oh, is hooray. Let me nice switch to horizontal because then I'll match you guys. All right. How did you know about hope? Um, I think, um, a combination of through Anthony Create and Tiger Singleton. Oh, Tig. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. How fun. Welcome. Yeah, Laurie and I are in a group together at the moment. Yeah. Uh, oh. Sharing daily live videos How wonderful. on Facebook. Mm. So you said you were sleep deprived. Feel oh yeah, I did. I heard you saying saying something. You referred to um, people saying they were tired because they hadn't slept enough, and you saying that's not the reason they're tired. Yes, it's not the reason they're t you're tired. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it, and you know, and, and, and every time, every time you you get the sense, and it's a sense that you're tired, and you agree with the thought that says you didn't get enough sleep then it, it keeps on exacerbating that same kind of appear, appearance of a problem. But what it comes down to that there's one problem. There's one problem, always one problem. And that's the thought that you separated yourself from reality. That's what makes the whole self belief. So it, there's one solution to that problem and that's just love, you know? So when you, when you have, when you see that thought projection go forth that says, I haven't had enough sleep, you just get the feeling of it. And that's where the love comes in. You get the feeling of this thought projection. Thought projection is coming from a feeling that's, it's false self-belief. And if, when you get the feeling effect of it, 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 it makes it so that it doesn't have the power to keep on going forward and feeding your self-belief. You might find yourself and then go to sleep but then you're not feeding self-belief with it by saying i didn't get enough sleep that is a guilty thought it also ties you in as a doer because it starts to say oh i need to be more responsible and let me just say this any kind of responsibility that you take for your body in the world is already being irresponsible it's totally irresponsible because there's only one thing that you're responsible for and that's eliminating that self-belief that says you're a doer you can't do anything. You can't make any choices. You can't make a choice to go to bed earlier. And even if you do, you might wake up groggy and say it's because you slept too much. <laughs> mm. Yeah, or not well enough. Yeah, mm -hmm. not deeply enough. All the stories. Yeah. Something was wrong. I've heard. I've I've heard. Um, you know, in my own experience from some time ago where it would be because I ate the wrong food that I didn't get the right sleep. I didn't eat the wrong food the night before. That's why. So right now in this moment, I have, um, so if I were to, to actually be more real about what's happening when I say I feel tired, I have like sensations in my cheeks and my chest that I associate with the idea of tiredness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just the and same. I also associate the same sensations with, oh, I might get sick. Oh, that's a good one. Mm. I love that one. Mm. That's one of my favorites. I, I'm going down. I'm coming down with it. Yeah. <laughs> Protected myself. Where's the vitamin C? Where's the echinacea? <laughs> 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 where's the where's the uh, airborne? Airborne? There. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't even know that one. But you know, uh, I've experienced this in my own body, uh, th and it's been about two years now. It's been about two years where there hasn't been a sickness there hasn't been a sickness you know and it all started one day when i was i was driving around hilo and all of a sudden i felt this familiar sensation like i'm getting sick right now and there was just a realization that a recognition a willingness to be like no that's that's guilt right now it's guilt and it's like let me see when you recognize that's a guilty, that's a, that's a guilty projection. It doesn't mm. have anything to do with anything. It's like, let me see. And you start to recognize what it is that you're holding against yourself. And when you see that, there's no reason to manifest illness. There's no reason for it. Mm. I can still, I can still manifest tiredness. I've had uh, the experience of, you know, going to sleep at night as feeling, feeling tired and going to sleep at night. 
but I don't go for those thought projections that say that I need the sleep and also that and also that um, that energy comes from sleeping that any energy comes from sleeping and at this point I find myself sleeping most nights two to three hours and then and then once in a while some nights five hours that you know that's like a long one but most of the time it's more like two to three hours and it's you know and and if there's any sense like i didn't get enough sleep you know there's just a reminding that energy does not come from sleep energy comes from awakening and that two three hours has been like an ongoing sustainable uh experience for you apparently yeah, I heard that there were like enlightened people out there who didn't need sleep. You you must be one now. <laughs> well, you never you never know. I'm open to I'm open to not having it all because I don't feel that it's actually necessary, but there's something still there's something still some kind of habit. I'm not going to say something in me cuz nothing's in me. It's not like I carry around this guilt like it's in my pocket or something. But there's habits of thought there's habits of thought and there's intentional, always intentional blinding ourselves. There's always intentional blinding ourselves. And here's the thing, when all of the habits are clear, when there's no more, when, when there's no more um, allegiance, no, not a shred of allegiance to self-belief, you guys won't see me. You will not see me. The only thing that holds me here so that you guys can see me in a physical form is that is some kind of allegiance to self-belief. It's some kind of allegiance to self-belief. And you know what? The only, the only practice is that every time it comes up, in whatever form it comes up, not to make yourself wrong for it or anything, but to be, to, to be grateful that it's coming up so that it could be undone because that's a whole purpose of living. That's a whole purpose of living. You know, this kind of living where it has an opposite. <laughs> How are you feeling now? <laughs> um, re relief, release of some tension that was there within the held belief of being tired. Nice. Mm. So you you are entitled to uh, to unlimited and unending releases because that's a release. That releasing is releasing the guilty thought. Mm. Basically, that you're that you're separate, that you actually are separate, and this and this manifestation is made to prove to you that you did in fact separate yourself from reality. That's why you get these different feelings. But don't trust the evidence. You keep <laughs> undoing it. Mm. thing i just remember they used to go to kind of a formal meditation gathering and every like 90 percent of the time i would be falling asleep or like catching myself falling asleep <laughs> while sitting and meditating <laughs> while i was there was no apparent reason logical you know worldly reason for it yeah i had that effect when i was um at a movie i was watching toy story 4 I guess it wasn't that interesting to me at first. It got pretty, oh. <laughs> but I, I find myself sitting there watching the movie and all of a sudden I get a neck adjustment because my head just goes like that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> but you know, it's like comedy. It's not, it's not like something that you have to make real or anything like that. Okay, so let me get to this one over here. I have. I think I, I think I answered that question for Pascal, but you know, he could always come on. He said he might catch it next time and come on with us. I, I love everyone that's on. Thank you so much for joining. Pascal's um, here? Not today, but he said, he, he said that he's traveling this week and he'll possibly come on next time because he wanted me to elaborate on that one um, about the body, about no feeling being justified, no feeling being justified, no feeling. That means no emotional feeling, no physical feeling ever justified. Okay, so someone asked me, could you say something about the contraction in the body or solar plexus, in the solar plexus specifically? I feel it most of the time. I know this one, it's so wonderful. It feels like a big knot 
That is why I love sleeping so much. It is a temporary escape from this contraction and an escape from this strange feeling in the solar plexus. And often when I have this body sensation, I burst out in tears <sighs> without a reason, just to resolve the, t the contraction. I would love to understand better what's going on. Okay, so number one, nothing is happening. That's number one, nothing's happening. It, this, this contraction, this appearance of a contraction in the solar plexus is just to say that, that your body is real because you get a reaction to it. You say, I'd love to sleep because of it. Um, you, you say this feeling is strange and stuff like that. I've had this sensation a lot in the solar plexus. And you know, it can really be appreciated that there's this feeling in the solar plexus because, because it's just saying, I'm real, I'm real, I'm real. That's all that's going on. It's just saying, I'm real and this feeling is real. What makes this feeling is the sense of guilt, just like any other feeling, just like any other feeling. And whether it's any kind of tension in your neck or wherever, anything like that, that seems to be going on, that's only a projection of mistaken self-belief you don't have to take it as real at all, okay? It does not mean anything. It does not mean anything. That's the main thing. Now, how can you be with that sense in the solar plexus? Get the feeling of it. Just keep getting the feeling of it. If you burst out into tears, that's okay. Notice the thought projections that say that you need to escape it, that anything is wrong with it, and keep on getting the feeling of it. Really, I'm telling you, it feels good. It feels good. Because every feeling, every feeling when it's, when it's met with, I can say that from being in childbirth too, where it's a feeling like as if there's pain in the body, as if there's pain in the body from, hip, from being in childbirth. And there's no, there's no pain at all. Pain is only a manifestation of fear. That sense in the solar plexus is, is like a, it's like a gift to you saying that you are entitled to release more and more and more. And you can feel this, you can feel this virtually as a release. You can, awesome. you could feel it. Is that, is that Raz? You're still on with us? I thought I just heard your voice. Yeah. <laughs> you did. I didn't realize my mic was still on. Oh. <laughs> I, I don't know where you went because I don't see you anymore. Okay, I know I know what to do. I am going to I'm going to move you back to where are you? I'm gonna keep on moving around on me. I know you're not doing. Uh, that. I muted myself already when, but I, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, cool. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Um, yeah. So you can have you can have a release in that so, that solar plexus that that tension in the solar plexus or anywhere in the body it could be your neck or anything, any tension in the body it's like an invitation for allowing release. But in order to allow release, you have to be comfortable with the tension. You have to be comfortable with the tension. Comfort within uncomfort. So the uncomfort is only coming from thought projections about it. All of your uncomfort is coming from a thought projection about that feeling. You know, having comfort within the uncomfort is really simple. All it is is willingness to get the feeling. And it's, it's, it's allowing yourself to feel safe with get the, getting the feeling as it is instead of projecting as if it's something wrong, okay? That's it. And if you want me to elaborate on that after you watch this, then just ask me another question. This particular friend says that she can never make it to Wisdom Dialogues because she's on the other side of the world and she's always sleeping at this time. Um, yeah, well maybe you'll find out you don't need so much sleep when you're embracing that feeling in the solar plexus and you'll be able to come on and have a conversation with me at one point. That'd be super fun. <laughs> So hooray, everyone. Um, I don't think I see any more questions here. Let me just look quickly over to Facebook and see if anyone has any questions from over there. Nope, no questions over there. So if anyone else has anything for me, um, I'm feeling complete. 
unless anyone has any questions, they want to write to me or raise their hand. Let me know. I see that Raz came back on. <laughs> For the closing circle. <laughs> or closing square, it looks like. Yeah. Square. <laughs> Did you have something else? No, nothing really. Just thank you. Gratitude. Wanted to tell us once again your beautiful head. Mm. <laughs> Good to see you again today. Yeah. What a love. Thank you so much for joining. Yeah, so thank I'd you. like to say, oh, yeah. I'd like to say um, for, you know, give my closing closing stuff. Anyone can still feel free to raise their hand if anything. Um, this is sponsored by Miracle Botanicals. I gave a link to a, to an article that I wrote earlier on. You can check it. You can check out that article. Also check out if you like essential oils, if you feel like, uh, like supporting this, so that's great. Um, you can also go to hopejohnson.org. It's just been, um, the, my website's just been redesigned by Tiger, so Tiger Singleton. Um, who I know from back in the day, Tig Monk, <laughs> and um, he did a beautiful job on it. You can check out my book, Unschooling for Parents, which is also great for anyone. It does, you don't have to be a parent. You can apply it all the way across the board to everything that you perceive, and mm -hmm. um, especially the inner child and how you treat yourself, because that's what really what it all comes down to. So check out hopejohnson.org, miraclebotanicals.com, and I'm here uh, online every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Hawaii time. If you'd like to join me, go to um, go to Facebook forward slash groups forward slash Wisdom Dialogues. Actually, no. You know what? Now you can just go to hopejohnson.org. <laughs> That's right. It's all right there. You can get Miracle Botanicals. You can get um, you can you can hook up with all my videos. I have like 150 more than 150 videos. And they're all around two hours long. I know that's a little much, but you know you can find you can you can put your people like to put their the, the, their headphones on or however they you know they can download it. Some people know how to download it to MP3 and stuff like that, and do their chores and all of its free content and everything. Um, it, and you can just you can just bliss out with it and help yourself to see through these thought patterns that have you as if you're in some kind of a prison, okay? So there's nothing like that. There's only we're just making it all up. And I'm so happy to share with you. And that's it. Yay. I don't see any more hands or questions. So mahalo, aloha, and a hooey ho. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. Thank you, Hope. <laughs>